Hi, Gizmo here. I um, don't know if you saw my last video or not, but I um, I had a few issues with this trolling motor, and uh, yeah, it failed on me on the trip. Now it's never ever let me down, but <laughs> I needed it on that trip, and uh, it was nine kilometres, which is one of the ones that I really wanted it not to fail. Uh, and I hadn't used it in almost a year, so. Um, the last thing that I actually did to it was I replaced one of the bushes, one of the brushes in the uh, motor because the braid had corroded off from the actual salt water getting in it so I re-soldered that braid back on. Now I'm thinking that possibly the heat of the motor has actually melted the solder off of the braid which I should have used, um, I should have brazed it and not soldered it. Um, or one of the brushes or both of the brushes have worn down to the point where they um, no longer are actually touching the motor. Um, one, of the mo one of the switches, it actually was shorting out a little bit. I replaced one of these switches not long ago, the big double one, because it, the older one started to corrode as well. And I bought an exact copy from, from somewhere on eBay. But it possibly might not carry the same amount of amps and it's a bit dodgy and sticky um, so that's also an issue it's not the issue why the motor actually just stopped midstream that seems more to me like a um, just like a brush issue like there isn't any thermal cutouts inside of this machine there is actually a big resistor that goes right down the shaft to create the fast and the slow speed so what my plan is, is when I work out what's wrong with it, I'm going to get rid of the resistor because I don't need slow speed on this. I just, when I want to go slow, I'll just turn the motor on and off slow, so I can slow down. Um, I don't get that much speed up with it anyway. Um, the other thing is I don't need forward and reverse fast and slow. So I'm going to get rid of these switches and I'll buy a um, heavier duty switch that will just carry full amperage straight to the motor so I'll pretty much just have a switch going straight to the motor wired directly to the motor without all the other stuff in there that could has the potential to break so then the only thing in future that has potential to break is the old brushes in the motor everything else should be fine um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the wiring with um, a lot heavier wiring just so it easily carries all the amps. Now this is a um, 8 millimeter, which is a little bit thick for this but that's all I have so I'll be using that. Uh, 6 millimeter wire would suffice but I don't have any left so I'm going to use 8 millimeter, which will be more than plenty to do the task. Um, there's a few other issues. This uh, nut that holds the motor up is threaded so I couldn't get the motor to stay right up because this, I need to undo that and re-tap a new thread in there and put a, a better nut than that on there. Apart from that, um, yeah, I think everything else will be fine. So I'll start pulling it apart and we'll have a look. Now when I do get to down and strip down, i am probably have to go, go and get some parts. I'll probably have to go and get a switch I might even look for some um, lighter cable on this one because it's not very flexible. Um, I'll get some 6mm cable instead. Um, I'll um, redo the Anderson plug on the end with the new 6mm cable and then it should be all good to go again. So we'll strip this thing down and we'll have a look. Okay. Um, I can't get the parts today because it's New Year's Day. I'll have to wait until um, tomorrow until the shop's all open again before I can go and get replacement bits and pieces but I can strip it all down today so let's get into that eh? so what you're going to find on this motor is you're going to find uh, these two switches one of these is um, fast and slow, one's forward and reverse and 
I think the big one's forward and reverse and this one is fast and slow. Now to control that we have uh, three wires coming up the shaft. We have a, a black one, we have a blue one and we have a red one. The red and the black are which just drive the motor and uh, the black one is deviated or the, or the red one is deviated, I don't know which one, but one of them is deviated through this blue wire which is a resistor. Now the resistor is a big coil that goes right up the shaft. It's, when I pull it apart I'll show you the resistor is a coil of copper wire that's all the way down this shaft and yeah, I'm going to get rid of that because I don't need it. What it does, it makes the, the, the motor go slow. Now a lot of people think that if they run the motor slow it's going to use less electricity but that actually isn't the case with how this is wired up. This is wired up with this big long resistor and all that resistor does is it absorbs some of the full energy so that the motor goes slower. So the energy is absorbed by this or the 12 volts is absorbed by this big long coil which causes the motor to go slower. So it's actually still using the same volume as electricity it's just being absorbed by this coil that's inside of here. So going fast or slow is actually no benefit to uh, saving your battery power. So yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm also going to get rid of reverse because this thing just swivels. It just swivels so like that. So when I want to go reverse I just swivel the motor around and I go reverse. It'll still, it just goes reverse by just swiveling it around rather than reversing the polarity of the, the motor to make it go reverse. So I'll get rid of all the complicated stuff and just start from scratch again. What I'm going to do is just put a big switch between the, the red and the black wire to switch the power directly on and off from the battery to the motor. I'm going to get rid of everything else. Uh, there is one other thing that I could do. I have to get a heavy duty switch to carry the amperage, the full amperage, through both of these wires. I could set up a relay to relay the power from the battery so the battery gets the full amperage through the relay but that's just one extra component that could break so I'm not even going to do that I'm just going to wait till I can actually get a heavy duty switch which can carry enough amperage say 40 amps or more I'll find one that will carry 40 amps or more probably more if I can find one 90 amp would be good um, just directly wire it straight through there and all I have on my motor now will be just a switch go stop and that will be it when I want to go reverse I just twirl it around so yeah that's the next plan so I'll just pull it all apart and I'll show you how this resistor is inside of here okay well I've pulled it apart and yeah this is the resistor that's what's inside that shaft it's a big coil of copper wire and uh, yeah it pretty much it come it come off the negative and it runs through the negative to pretty much absorb some of the energy when it's uh, to make it go slower and that's what the resistor does it, it sends the negative power through the resistor rather than directly to the to the um, motors and when you switch it to high speed it bypasses the resistor so that's what that is. So I'm, I don't need the resistor anymore. That's going. I don't need it. I'm not going to bother about having fast and slow speed. So the resistor is gone. I can get thrown in the bin. Now what I did notice when I pulled it apart was that it was actually full of water. Um, I probably should have did some um, checking before I actually went on this trip and uh, reserviced the motor again but I didn't but yeah it's in a poor state that uh, commutator is just all gooked up with grease and yuck it's a wonder that the, con the, the brushes could get any contact at all from that so yeah the commutator needs to be clean and shiny for the brushes to run on for it to pass electricity through so that's like dirty so yeah, I'll clean all that off and I'll just put it all back together and see if she runs now because check the brushes the brushes are fine it, this one's one that I actually soldered the wire onto I don't know if you can see that I actually soldered the wire onto there um, it's still fine, it didn't burn out so that was okay so yeah, no issues with that 
Um, the other one was still fine, so I will um, put it back together and just see if it runs now that I've cleaned the water out of it. If it does, then I'll just um, clean this up much better, buff it all up, put it all back together, re-silicon the whole case and everything back together. So it should be ready and should be good for next time. Now they really need to come up with better seals on these things than what they've got. I've um, got a video on how I put a new seal on this shaft to stop the water getting in. It works pretty good, but I don't know how I don't know how long that water's been in there since the last time I used it. I don't even know if it was salt or fresh. Um, yeah, that's just a silly mistake on my part, not actually doing any maintenance to the thing before I went on the trip, but I didn't have time. Now I did say on my other video not to spray any of these copper windings with WD-40 or anything like that. They've got a clear coating of lacquer over them and if you do that you can actually burn the wire out or melt the coating off the wire and the, and the motor will short. But you can sand that commutator smooth and you can sand these contacts to make them contact because inside this motor here it's two big magnets and the magnets cause the deflection, the magnetic um, the magnetic deflection so that causes the motor to actually spin from those big magnets in there so you just got to create a magnetic field that's what the copper coil does creates a magnetic field and deflection which causes the motor to spin so um, yeah I'll just clean everything up so I can I can clean everything else up with WD-40 get all that moisture and water out of there I just can't put it on on this and a guy pointed out to me on one of my videos saying, you're not supposed to spray it with WD-40. Well, I did actually say that on my video. You just obviously didn't watch the entire video. <laughs> if I was to choose whether to have um, WD-40 or Inox, I'd probably choose Inox, but I, um, I don't have that handy. So yeah, now that I've seen that the brushes are actually fine, um, nothing's actually broken. I think it's just shorted out because of the, uh, the dirt on the commutator, the grease in that on the commutator, and uh, it's stopped the contacts from actually working. So nothing too major. <laughs> I feel like a doofus. No, I don't really. I um, like I said, I didn't have enough time to do this service to this motor before I left, otherwise I would have. Alright, so what I'll do now, I'll just quickly put it back together, and we'll test it out and see if she runs. I just discovered another thing that actually could have caused the motor to fail. Inside of these things, these are the things that support the, uh, the brushes, there's a tiny little spring. In there and that tiny little spring pushes the brush onto the commutator and I do remember one of these springs actually being corroded and I replaced it with a um, spring out of a ballpoint pen so whether that spring is actually no good now or not either I'm not sure that one this one's still springing 
see what the other one's like. It's um, yeah, it's 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 uh, it's not very good. I mean, it's it's okay. That that could be the cause of the problem. There, the little spring not pushing the um, brush out. It's a combination of all these things. But um, yeah, I'm going to find two new little springs, put those in. You need little stainless steel springs, are really for this, because anything else is going to corrode. But yeah. I don't have any, I have no idea where you get them from. But I do have a jar full of springs here somewhere. See what we've got here. There's one perfect size little spring. You don't want these springs to be too heavy and put too much pressure on either because they'll just wear your brushes out really quick. So try and pick one that's pretty much the consistency of the ones that are in it. Now if that's coming out or not, pretty hard to see. But, um, yeah. Try and find another one. Good place to search for a little spring is uh, inside uh, ballpoint pens. There we go. I think mean, this spring would actually do both because it's. Uh, I'll snip that in half. That'll actually do both. Okay. Well, here goes nothing. Um, we're going to connect these two wires up. Um, it's just directly wired straight now. Uh, the other thing to make note of is that the polarity, um, the red and the black polarity, one will make it spin forward depending on which way you connect it to the battery when I make a spin reverse. So yeah, I need to check that and see which way it's spinning. I might have to swap the two, the red and the black around. When I do it, we'll see what happens. There you go. <laughs> She's working. So that's all it was. It was just uh, water and grease and long muck inside the engine stopped it from going um, and the dodgy switches. So they're going to be gone soon. Um, yeah, well, that's all this video was about. Um, I'll see you on the water next time.